Welcome everyone. Today we'll be looking at four of the best builds for Zonli that is coming in the next banner. In this video, we'll look at the potential to scale Zonli with HP to do massive damage with his ultimate. In one of the four builds we'll be looking at, we'll look at how to get Zonli over 40,000 HP and how to scale his HP with burst spell damage and also increasing of shield over 7,800. We'll look into the artifact choices and the combination to make this one possible. After that, we'll look into the physical damage DPS build for Zonli and also the geo damage build for him. And finally, we'll look into how to turn Zonli into a petrifying DPS support to stun and also debuff enemies. To start off this guide, did you guys know that Zonli scales with his maximum HP for increased damage by 33% for his burst damage ultimate, the meteorite which is demonstrated over here? So what that means is the higher maximum HP Zonli has, the more damage he can deal with his ultimate. And similarly, Zonli also scales with HP for his E spell for the additional shield. And this can scale up to 20% or even higher for his maximum HP. So I'm sure some of you are thinking, what if we build a support Zonli with all HP percentages? And what happens? So here I made a first detailed guide onto Zonli with HP percentage. So we'll be looking at HP percentage on everything. We'll be looking for energy gain and also HP percentage. This allows him to cast his ultimate more often. And if we look at the numbers of HP using the fandom for the highest scaling HP at 46.6% per artifact and also getting some sap stats for the artifacts, we're looking at about 160% HP plus 5,500 from the artifacts of the flower and also sap stats. And from this post from Gideon127, we can see that out of all the characters in the game, Zhongli and Jing have the highest HP at level 90. So at level 80, we're looking at Zhongli's HP for 13,662 and if we take all of those numbers into calculation we're looking at about 41,000 HP for Zhongli and if this HP translates into damage we're looking at 13,500 additional damage for his burst damage spell so now if we estimate Zhongli have 1,300 attack and with the 700% multiplier at the level 7 for his burst ultimate what we're looking at is, we're looking at about 9,000 damage plus 13,000 damage, about 22,000 damage for his burst ultimate if he scales everything with HP. I know this is not going to be the highest factor for scaling because, you know, there's ultimate damage, there's geo damage that we can scale with, but even with our critical hitting, we're looking at close to 20,000 damage. And keep in mind, guys, the higher HP also scales into his bonus shield with his E spell. And also we're looking at 7,800 shield strength and with 5 to 25% additional shield from his talent 1. Both of the spells have 12 second cooldown. We can also consider going for 2 animals or maybe using a constellation 2 chunwin to minus cooldown by another 15%. Now of course, this HP scaling zone build is more theoretical and it's more for fun. I don't think this one will be the top meta one, but it's very interesting to see a character that can scale everything with HP for his E spell and also ultimate. So I thought it's nice to, for us to look at the notes and also to consider what artifacts we can go for. We can go for additional 35% shield, we can go for additional burst damage with his ultimate, or we can go with a support build with the Noblest Obligate for 20% burst damage and also 20% more attack for the whole team. Now coming over to some of the more standard builds, we can look into a physical damage DPS build with Zonli. Because Zonli doesn't buff his attacks into Geo, having a physical damage build for Zonli could be the top meta build. We can be looking at attack percentage, physical damage percentage, and also critical damage or critical rate, depending on how we balance this. We should be aiming for 1 to 2 with critical damage and also critical rate. For the artifact stats, we can look for the critical rate, critical damage, attack, and also HP percent. We know that HP percent scales for his damage for his ultimate and also for his shield, so it's nice to know the ratio of those stats. Now if we have the same main stats for our artifact, if we're comparing the sub stats, we should use this as reference. Likely every 5% of critical rate is better than close to 10% of critical damage, 7.5% of attack, and 7.5% of HP. If you're wondering where I'm getting this from, there is a previous video which will look at all the stats and I'll also show the comparison and why critical rate is very important. So if you guys want to have a look at this video, I do recommend coming over here and also to download this particular table which is very useful for all of the stats. Coming over to the choice of build for the artifacts for Zone League. Instead of showing you guys all of the artifacts that is available for the 5 star artifacts, I have made a summary over here so you can see the top 3 artifacts for each of the build. For the 2 piece choice, we can go with the Blood Stained for 25% physical damage increase and for the 4 piece choice, we can go with the Gladiator's Finale for the 35% normal attack and also 18% attack damage. 
Now, if you're going for a shield build, or if you're thinking you'll be having a lot of shield, it's okay to go with a tracing body for the 35% more shield and also 40% normal attack while under the shield. Now, this physical build with Zhongli is by far one of the strongest because you can make use of the physical damage sub stats from the Crimson Spike that is given by the Blacksmith if you craft those with the prototypes. This weapon is by far one of the best weapons. And if you want to know how good this weapon is, I actually included it in one of my top 10 must try weapons with the 3 stars and 4 stars. And in that video, I explained how good this weapon is, how it can trigger multiple attacks and deal additional much more than 20% more damage. Now, if you haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so. Make sure you also turn the bell on for the latest news as I find more of them for us. You can see that we're really dedicated for Genshin Impact. We'll have builds, guides, tips, news, and events updates for everything that's Genshin Impact related. Next up, we have a Geo DPS damage build for Zhongli. This time we'll be going for Geo damage on the Goblet over the physical damage. Now, if you guys are wondering, does Zhongli actually do enough Geo damage? So what we can look at is the damage from Zhongli's E spell actually triggers the Stone Resonance damage, and this damage is Geo. And similarly, his ultimate does Geo damage and also Petrifying reduce the enemy's Geo and Physical Resistance. But although both of Zhongli's spells scales with Geo damage, he is not like the Luke of someone who can buff himself with elemental damage. Compared to the Luke who has Dawn to buff all his attacks into Pyro, Zhongli does not have that, so his normal attack will always deal the normal attack damage. And in that sense, I still think the Physical Damage build is slightly better than the Geo build. The Geo build is more consistent if you're just swapping him in to cast the shield and cast the ultimate. Looking at the main and sub artifact stats, we can see that this Geo build is very similar to the physical build. So we're going for critical rate, critical damage, attack, and HP percentage, with a similar ratio as over here as shown over here. And also for the artifact set, because we're going for Geo build, this time we'll go for the Arctic Petra for the increase of 25% Geo damage. And because we want to scale his ultimate for more damage, we can consider using the Nobilis for the 2 set for the 20% burst damage, or we can go for the 4 set for additional buff for the whole team. You can see that I have also included the Gladiator's Finale and also Retrition Body, but unfortunately those two does not scale with Geo damage. The 18% attack is okay, but everything else with normal attack does not help with the Geo damage. Now I'm sure by this point, you'll be wondering, if we can't build Zhongli for the main Geo damage DPS, what if we turn him into a petrifying DPS support with Geo damage? And this is when things come interesting. If we look at the meteorite from Zhongli's animation, we can see that the monsters are stoned after he hit them, and what that means is, not only are they immobilized, they can't move and stunned, they also take additional Geo and also physical damage. By petrifying enemies, Zhongli will reduce the enemy's Geo and also physical defense by 20 seconds, and this makes his burst spell extremely powerful. If we come look at the stats details for this spell, it only costs 40 energy, and also the cooldown is only 12 seconds. This means that we can continuously debuff enemy for 3 up to 4 seconds with the petrifying effect every 12 seconds, and increasing the whole team's damage by 20% with physical or geo. For the main artifact stats, we can go with attack percentage or energy gain to cast more ultimate. After that, we can go with geo damage because he'll be casting more ultimate and more skills. Finally, we can go with critical damage or critical rate or even attack percentage just to scale for his ultimate to do a little more damage. Because he's a support, it doesn't really matter which stats he get, as long as he deals a little more damage, it's really good for us. We can even consider HP percentage over here. Now because we want Zhongli to cast as often as he can, having a bit of energy gain really helps. Now depending on our own playstyle, it's hard to say how much energy gain we need because you can be using Zhongli more often for his energy gain with the E-spell, or you can be using him less often which requires us to have more energy gain. So likely we want at least 10% or maybe up to 30% total energy gain just for him to cast his spells more often. Because he only requires 40 energy, it is likely we still get him to cast those very often. The other substats of choice will be critical rate, critical damage, attack, and also HP percent. Now, because he's a support, you can consider going for more of the HP percent or attack percent just for the scaling of damage or for the defensive capacity of extra shield. We will be using the similar ratio comparison, and you can see over here, this is the ratio for the energy gain. So if we look at the main stats of choice over here, you might be wondering, hey, doesn't only scale with HP, and why don't you just go with HP and energy gain? And this is when we come back to the first build, guys, where we go for all HP and energy gain. So this is a fully support defensive support only, 
and over here on the fourth build this is the offensive zone for more damage with his burst spells and having more damage with critical rate and also critical damage now the artifact choice for the offensive support petrifying zone Li, we can go with the nobilis obligate for the two set and the four set we can go for the 20 percent burst damage 20% attack buff, which is really nice to combine with the petrifying effect to increase our damage and then reduce the enemy's defense. And after that, we can consider going for the two pieces of Arctic Petra. And if we do not find enough good main stats on the four piece of the Noblesse Obligate, we can consider breaking into the two pieces for two Noblesse and also two Arctic Petra for the burst damage, also geo damage, because we're building a burst damage geo support. We can go with the Gladius Finale and Restriction Body for the two pieces. Those are not very massive. I think if we're building for the offensive support zone Lee, we still want to hit over 20,000 and with a critical hit for 40,000. So what that means is we want to scale everything into his burst damage ultimate. Let me know in the comments below guys, what do you think about those builds? If you have any new builds for zone Lee or if you have any new ideas, feel free to share with us. And if it works, we can make it onto the next guide for zone Lee. Now hopefully you guys found those four builds interesting and as Zone Lee's banner comes out, if we do get lucky with Zone Lee with the banners, we can try some of the builds. What I'm thinking is, I might not go for the full HP support because that is too defensive. I might go for the petrifying support and build Noel for the full DPS. Otherwise, I can go with Zone Lee for the physical damage DPS and try to use my Crimson Spike, which I do have three of those ready for him. Now if you found this video helpful, Make sure you subscribe and also turn the little bell on for the latest news. I'll be looking towards to make more builds, guides, tips and news and event updates for us as we come further into the game. And as always, I wish you guys the best of luck with Catherine and have the most fun in exploring this wonderful world.